Hey guys, welcome to another Toronto Audio Fest. While I wasn't able to be there all three days, I still somehow managed to get a lot more footage than I did last year. So what I'll be doing is breaking things up into two separate videos. Everything will be timestamped and chapter marked, so you could go ahead and skip to what you want to check out. Long story short, this year did not disappoint. In this video, we've got some breaking news from Hegel. We get surprised by a small set of desktop speakers. We get a chance to have a chat with Thomas about what's new and upcoming from Galleon Audio. And we even experienced cables. More on that later. It gets weird, mama. <laughs> So I've got Anders here from Hegel. Hello. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm likewise. Kind of a big fan. All right, so I'll spare you guys the excessive fanboy gushing that came out of my mouth here. I went on to tell Anders about my experience that I had with the H190 and that I recently added the Hegel H390 to my system. Review incoming, by the way, it's awesome. Then I mentioned that I would probably not be selling the H190 because of how much I love it. Instead, I'll be building a new system around that integrated in another room. I am humbled. Our main topic was the freshly released H600. The H600 that I just checked out, it sounded amazing with magna pens. Yes. I'm like you were telling me before, you're not a fan of planar magnetic speakers. And I feel the same way, but I connected with the ones in that room. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, and of course, when I say I'm not a fan of playing our speakers, it's because like somebody like Apple, somebody likes pears. Yep. And different flavors. Uh, exactly. That's what it is. And, and I've heard a few playing our speakers that has given me something like in the Florida show last fall or last uh, spring. And uh, no, this spring. And at the Expona show, we played some Clarisis playing our speakers that were fantastic and that kind of opened my eyes to it so my colleague Brad uh, Paulson who's a sales manager up here in Canada and in the US he said I really like to play magna pants once and I I said after the Clarisis experience I said okay let's do that and um, and so here we are when I demoed um, magna pants I think it was the, the LRS or it was the one up from that mm -hmm. and it just see they seemed too anemic for me but when I walked into that room with the, what were you saying? It was the 3.7i. The 3.7i's, they just, they had that magic that mm -hmm. I feel was lacking from my last demo. So maybe that's Could be. I mean, it's, uh, it's, again, I'm not an expert on these speakers, but I shall give it to Brad. It's very good. He has a very long history with Magna Pants and he did a lot of setup. And he sat me down and listened to it because he wanted to teach me and get me into these Magna Pants speakers. Like, do you get it now, Anders? And like, I started getting it more and more and as he worked with the setup. They're, I think I'm getting it too, but I think it has more to do with your new H600. I like to, to hope that it's a really good match, though, at least. I mean, they're great speakers. They've been around for a long time and know what they're doing. So on that vein, what is new? What is different between the H600, uh, between the outgoing H590? Well, it's quite a few things. But it's easier to say what's similar, and the similarities is the output stage. That's actually the same thing. Okay. So it's a couple of what's more, uh, because we did some tweaking on the main power supply and then it, it did give out a few watts more, uh, so we decided, okay, let's put that in the papers. But the big difference is in the DA converter and the preamplifier, and also the streaming capabilities, like what it can do. But I'd say we, we've been working on this amplifier for a long time. The first thing we did was make a brand new DA converter right. that made it uh, quite a bit better. It was a big step up. I think. What's the difference in, in the old and the new DA converter? Well, it's almost everything down to the chipsets we use and the implementation and almost everything. Um, there were some things we, we discovered during um, the pandemic phase where also the AKM chip factory burnt down, so right. we had to do something. We had a lot of AKM chips on stock, but we had to start experimenting with all kinds of other, other DAC chips like Cirrus, ESS, Texas Instruments and so on and see if we could make implementations at the same quality as AKM okay, with yeah. those other brands. 
and we had some positive surprises, some challenges and whatnot, but we, we also found the foundation for the new DX converter in the H600 using ESS chips that just had something magical to it after a lot of work. Right, <laughs> because you can't just take a, an ESS chip and throw it in there and expect it to be amazing like what I heard in that room. No, you can, you can I think now I'm talking a little bit about my, my expertise because I'm sales, finance, and marketing, all that. But uh, as I understand it, an ESS chip is an easy way to make a reasonably good DAC. But it it's demands a whole lot more to make a phenomenal DAC. Awesome. So that's what, what we're thinking. But then essentially the biggest uh, uh, upgrade sonically is the preamplifier. Uh, we have basically scaled down our the reference uh, P38 preamplifier and used that a volume attenuator and other things in the H600. And that is an amazing uh, improvement in performance. Cool. Very cool. Well, it, it sounded amazing. Yeah. My H390 is unbelievable. I don't want to swear, but it's un-effing believable. <laughs> And I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Hegel. Oh, well, thank you. I love what you guys I'm are humble. doing. All right. Well, it was so great meeting you and interviewing you. And uh, yeah, guys, check out Hegel. Cool. Great to meet you too. H600. Woohoo! So we were just off camera. We were just talking about the H190. And I heard a rumor that it, you were going to come out with the H200 soon. And what, what, is, what are your remarks to that? Well, that is not actually true. Uh, we've told all our partners, but we haven't gone out broadly, so this will be the first time I think we say it publicly as such. But there isn't coming an H200, as there's been rumored. Uh, but we have been asked for years to put a phono stage in our amplifiers, and we decided let's try that with the H190. So there will be an H190 version replacing the current one with a phono stage uh, built into it pretty much the MM part of a V10 phono stage. Um, that's going to be probably the only difference. I'm not, I'm saying probably because the product isn't entirely finished yet. Right. It's coming out like spring, April, May. So that's why there's a sale uh, in many parts of the world now where we're slowly selling out. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really good deal at this, at this point. Yes, it is. But uh, so it's not gonna be the, necessarily be the H200 and nope. the, the only difference is gonna be the phono stage. Yep. Pretty much. I, I don't think there will be another difference. Wow. So, but it's, it will not be an H200. That said, there will be new products from Hegel next year, but those I can't tell you about. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm so excited and nervous. <laughs> I just got my H390. Um, that's okay. You can, you can go ahead. Since, since you're on pause, is there anything that uh, we, you know, he can hold on to the video if there's anything yeah. you want to announce? No, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. So. No, I meant in terms of like new products and things like that. Yeah, oh no, he's yeah, not going to yeah, leak. No, 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 <laughs> he's, going he'll to get in trouble. Product. He's under NDA because, and. Yeah, no, yeah. it's because it's because new like real or bigger news. Those mm -hmm. are quite often <clears throat> under development and not only decided exactly what. Yeah, and to be under, sometimes like, they may zag months. when when they were going to do this and then they change uh, direction. Exactly. So, so I understand. Some, sometimes we've been out too early telling our closest partners what's going to be. Right. And, uh, and, uh, and then you've, uh, along the way, you've changed your mind. Okay, let's not do those inputs. Let's not do that yep. feature, but let's do this instead. And then people get really angry because they've expected something. I'll never be angry. I could never be angry at you, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's, that's pretty much breaking news because I, yeah, I, didn't, breaking news. I well, didn't know that that was happening. I'm actually happy to say it because I've been trying to tell our partners, mm -hmm. but somehow people don't believe me. So. <laughs> well, I believe you, and uh, I'm excited that you're making an already amazing integrated, yeah. uh, even more versatile, yeah. because people want phono. Yeah. So, yeah, they do. And it's going to be just as good. Yeah. So mine is still amazing. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. Well, I guess that's the benefit of having something that sounds good, is it's always going to sound good. It's, yeah, it's always going to sound good, but we have to come up with something new, but we, we really just wanted to, to make, try and make an easy implementation uh, where we have a good phono stage in our V10, and we could take the, the moving magnet part mm -hmm. out of that, 
put that in and out. But if we if we are not like no, that's all right. <laughs> we, We're in a stairwell. <laughs> oh, she went away. If we put that in that mini project into a big project, right? The big project gets even bigger and sometimes out of hand, so that's why we did this. Got it. Curveball. All right. Well, thank you for the breaking news. I'm I'm really excited. You're most welcome. <laughs> This room caught me totally off guard. We just heard some nice music from the hallway and just sort of, you know, wandered in. The crazy part was these little computer speakers that this really big sound was coming from. We're here with Brett from Canto, and Brett, you've got something new to show us. Yeah, thanks for joining us. We're here at the Toronto Audio Fest. We are in room 360, and we are showing our brand new speaker, Aura. It's a reference desktop speaker. So this speaker will be available on October 30th. Uh, it's not even on the market yet. We're demoing it here for one of the first times. Um, the big selling points for these speakers is it's a little desktop speaker. They sound surprisingly well for the size that they are. They absolutely pack a punch. The driver is fantastic, and it really gets a low end that is not heard of in, a, in speakers this size. So the key you know, selling points for this is they're bi amp, so we have an individual amp that drives the woofer and the tweeter. You can connect to them with Bluetooth, USB-C, and RCA. We're really proud of these speakers. Uh, if you're in Toronto, come on down and check them out. Otherwise, you can buy them online uh, starting on October 30th. Very cool. And just to add, uh, when I walked in here, the sound was very big. And I think that's what you were playing them through, not the YU6s. Yeah, yeah. Everyone has been really impressed with the, uh, with the sound stage of these speakers. They definitely sound a lot bigger than they are. Uh, one of the really nice features that I forgot to mention is they have a high-pass filter as well. So when you connect the subwoofer, everything below 100 hertz is going to be channeled into the subwoofer, Very which nice. really frees the mids up, and it really opens up the speaker, especially if you're listening to anything that's bass heavy. Cool. Yeah, and just to, I, I'm not sure if this comes out on camera, but these are frickin' tiny. Um, if you could see the YU6s in the background, they're just so small, they take up very little space, but they sound big. Yep, they're, they're, they're really a true desktop speaker. Uh, they're not a big form factor, but you would never know how big they, you know, if you're just to listen to them, you would think they're a much bigger speaker. So you were, you were saying that the Aura has DSP tuning? Yes, yeah, so that was one of the things that I wanted to mention. Uh, from U2 to Aura, U2 does not have DSP tuning, and the Aura does. So that's one of the that's one of the reasons why we're able to get such a low bass response on these speakers. Yeah, the bass is crazy on them for such yeah. little boxes. Very cool. And when I walked in and, and uh, there was music playing, were they hooked up to your sub? Uh, they weren't hooked up to the subwoofer no at the way. time. <laughs> that was just the speakers. Oh my God, that's crazy. The little the ba the amount of bass that comes out of them without a subwoofer. Um, what kind of sub is this? So this is our sub eight. Um, it is on the market right now. It's a sealed sub that retails for 329 Canadian. Uh, it is a yeah. It's it's been a great sub for us. Uh, as far as sealed subs go, there's not really too many on the market that uh, are at that pr price point that can compete with our speaker. Very our cool. Sub sorry. And I forgot to mention the price point for these. Yeah, I was just about to ask you. These are going to retail for 399 Canadian. Excellent. And how much, just to put it into uh, comparison, how much are the YU2s? Yeah, so the U2s are $299. Aura, which is going to be the kind of the next step, is going to be $399. Our U4 is $479. Our U6 is $579. And then Tuck on the end here is $999. Very cool. I've actually never seen the Tuck. Well, we can do a demo for you when we're done here. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It was so great to interview you. Okay. Thank you very much. My interest was definitely piqued, and I may actually get these in for review. Now, let's catch up with Thomas. We've got Thomas Tan from Galleon Audio, of course, and from well, Thomas, and, Thomas and Stereo. Thomas and Stereo. You know, I feel like I'm going to a karaoke with this man. All right. Would you like to do a song? <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I do have some requests. <laughs> yeah, right. So I just finished hearing uh, the first room yes. with the 75 watt, mm -hmm. what was it called? It's, well, I call it TS75, right? TS75. TS stands for Thomas and Stereo. Right. 75, 75 watts. 
and tell me a bit about it. Uh, for me, it's going to be one of those giant killer, right? Because you get all the bass you want. The bass is just insane on it. You got OK mid range, clear, and then you have the, 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 the treble extended really, really high up, and you get the sound stage. Yeah, well, it sounded all, great in there. Yeah, all for less than two grand. I feel like a salesman right now, but uh, I'm confident in that amp, and I'm very surprised how good it is, myself. So tell me a bit about your Made in Canada amp. I'm really excited to check out. All right, Made in Canada is difficult. <laughs> Very difficult. The, the reason is because you can't just say, all right, I want to order that amp, here's the check, send it to me. I have to go get the boxes. The kit, you know the box, to, the, the box to, uh, to put the amp in? I have to go pick them up. That's how crazy it is, right? right? So it's, and paying Canadian labor is no joke, man. Seriously. So that's why the amp is going to be a, a little bit on the expensive side, about 3000 something US. Okay. But class A, and it's all about the mid range. And I hope, because we're on an audio show, it's difficult to demo, you know, the subtle nuances, the subtle detail. Everybody, everybody wants boom, boom, boom. Right. So, you know, you let me know. Yeah, uh, no, I can't wait to check it out. All right. So after that, I went up to Thomas's other room, and the demo started with his TS120 SE. Now, they had just turned it on, so it wasn't warmed up or anything, but it still sounded really nice anyways. The bass came through really well and reminded me of my time demoing the regular non-SE version. Later, they connected Thomas's prototype Class A amp. You're gonna see that the bass is not as strong, but once you listen to voice, eh. And I think Thomas honestly downplayed its bass. While not as hard hitting as the TS120 SE, I found it to be more than adequate. The mid-range on the other hand was really nice and smooth. It actually reminded me of what I get out of my Class A headphone amp. Overall, I think the TSA-20 is going to be something special, and I personally love that it's made over here in Canada. All right, so during the demo, there was this guy sitting next to me, and he was complaining about his system at home being too sharp in the treble area. He requested Thomas play a specific Indian song that normally bugs him, you know, to see if it sounds better on this system. What's happening here to the highs? The highs. Yeah. It's a bit shouty. So as you can see, it still wasn't his jam, or should I say chutney. Leo from Altitudo Audio mentions that he could actually fix this with, brace yourselves, cables. So both Leo and Thomas go ahead and swap out the RCA and power cables and play the exact same track again. I, I believe so, yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Do you see the eyes? Yeah. Cables. <laughs> Cables, am I right? You, know, you don't have to believe it. Just listen and that's it. So pretty much everyone in the room was both gobsmacked and confused, myself included. I asked if the volume was turned down and it wasn't touched. My friend Andy was in the back of the room, like close to the door, and even he said that it was definitely shrill at first and then pleasant to listen to after the wires were changed. This was an almost unanimous consensus with everyone else in the room, I might add. This was so weird and definitely something that I'm fired up to experiment with going forward. Cables. 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 Dope, so, that's it for part one. Check out my next video for more interviews and experiences and remember to do all the things. Thanks for watching. Bye. Cables. Repetitively. Goodbye.